I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of the greatest gifts unto Israel, the greatest gifts given unto Israel. We are going to continue with examples. I want to remind you that this Bible is the living word. It is the past, the present, and the future all rolled into one. It is the recorded voice of Yahweh, the Most High Power, the creator of heaven and earth. This book, this living word, this living water was given unto Israel and Israel alone. The nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. Our first scripture will be in the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, and we will start at verse 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, the I here being Yahweh, the Most High Power, thee being Israel. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, that is the nation of Israel, her, she, the nation of Israel, and gather her that was driven out, Israel, driven out of the land. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they had been put to shame, every place where we have been called niggers and spicks and wetbacks and prairie niggers. Every place where we have been called migrants and immigrants and the poor and the minorities. And that means the entire earth. Because as it is written, the Father said in the curses upon Israel in Deuteronomy 28, that we would be scattered to the four corners of the earth. So Israel today is scattered in the four corners of the earth. And the Father says he will get us praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. We've been put to shame everywhere on this earth. Everywhere. 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 At that time will I bring you again, you being Israel, the nation of Israel, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith Yahweh. We as a nation are serving out the last of our last captivity for punishment for the sins and the abominations of our forefathers and foremothers. We are at the very end of this captivity. The only one who can deliver us from this captivity is Yahweh Shai, the right arm, the beloved son of Yahweh. Let's go now to the book of 1 Kings chapter 3 and 5. We have a kingdom coming. We are promised a kingdom, an eternal, everlasting kingdom, with Yahweh Shai being our king. Let's look back at another king. It was said that Yahweh Shai would take the throne of his father, King David. Let's look at another king that Yahweh blessed Israel with, and whose kingdom is an example unto us, Israel of what is possible in this new kingdom. None of us know exactly what the new kingdom is going to be. It's going to be phenomenal. But we can use this Bible, which tells us our past, our history, as a guideline for what we can expect in the new kingdom. Again, heaven shall be here on earth with the nation of Israel being the top nation on the earth and being the top kingdom forever and ever, world without end, as it is written. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. In Gibeon, Yahweh appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and Yahweh said, Ask what I shall give thee. Let's jump down to verse 7. And now, O Yahweh, my most high power, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. I don't know the right way, Father. I don't know the right way. I don't know the right way. That's humility. That's understanding that 
He's in corruptible flesh. He's just a man. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. He understood who Israel is to the most high power. His chosen, his holy, his jewels, his precious, his peculiar. King Solomon understood that he was in the midst of the father's creation and greatness and love. King Solomon understood he was in the midst of a people sacred unto the most high power. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. Israel is a great, mighty, wonderful nation of people who Yahweh loves. And the speech pleased Yahweh that Solomon had asked this thing. Solomon did not think of himself in that moment. He thought of the nation, the nation of Israel, the father's adopted, the father's family, the father's chosen. How may I serve them? This is what he asked of the Most High. Let's go to chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 29. And Yahweh gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. So the father gave our forefather, King Solomon, understandings of everything. The beginning, the middle, the end, the functionings, the functionings of the earth, the functionings of the elements. The father truly gave unto our forefather, King Solomon, understanding. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezrahite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. So as we read in Zephaniah 3, the father says he will save us. He will bring us home and give us fame and praise in all the earth. Well, he's done it already with our forefather, King Solomon. So we know that this word is true. We know that this word is true. Let's go to chapter 10. And we will go to verse 24. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which Yahweh had put in his heart. He was a wise man in flesh, but a wise man. So we, as the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, the so-called Native Americans, we are promised a king, a king of kings, a Lord of lords to come. Well, we've had a king who was granted wisdom by the father. What else was he granted by the father? Let's go up to verse six. This is when the queen of Sheba came to visit our forefather, King Solomon. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Fame and praise throughout the whole earth. The whole earth heard of the works of Yahweh through King Solomon. And the queen of Sheba said, I, I can't believe it. It, it can't be that. <laughs> it can't be that good. Let me go see for myself. And she came. And not only did she see and believe, she said, I wasn't even told half. I wasn't even told half. You're wiser than I thought you were. This kingdom is more prosperous than I was told. What I was told was such that I didn't even believe it. And I was only told half of it. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants which stand continually before thee and that hear thy wisdom. Your people are happy. You're wise and your people are happy. Blessed be Yahweh thy most high power, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel. Because Yahweh loved Israel forever. 
Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. Pay attention here. The queen of Sheba is recognizing the most high power of Israel. She didn't say of the whole earth. <laughs> she didn't say of the whole earth. Of Israel. The most high power of Israel. Now he is the creator of heaven and earth and all that there is. But he has chosen Israel. And she acknowledges this right here in the Bible. Let's go back to chapter 4. And we will start at 24. So he is wise. Our king is wise. Blessed with wisdom by Yahweh. And his people are happy. Happy. His people are happy. What else? For he had dominion over all the region of this side of the river, from Tifsa even to Azah, over all the kings on this side of the river. And he had peace on all sides round about him. So our king, our forefather king Solomon, had dominion over the other kings. The other kings served him. He was in control. His kingdom was the top kingdom. He also had peace. Israel had peace under the reign of King Solomon. Peace, peace, peace. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely. Every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. We had peace and we dwelt safely in our kingdom. Take that in for a minute, Israel. What would it be like to serve a king who was wise, blessed with wisdom by Yahweh, who had a kingdom where there was peace and you could dwell safely? What would that be like to just not fear for your life every day? What would that be like? What else was King Solomon blessed with? Let's go up to verse 20. Judah and Israel were many as the sand which is by the sea in multitude. This and let's just take a moment to notice in this verse that it fulfills a prophecy spoken of by Yahweh to our forefather Abraham back in Genesis 22 and 17, where Yahweh said unto Abraham, your descendants will be as numerous as the stars of the sky and as the sand on the seashore. This verse talks about the multitude of Jacob and Israel. Reading, Judah and Israel were many as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. Here we are in our kingdom, eating and drinking and partying and singing and dancing and being joyous because we are safe. We have a leader who is wise and just, who gives fair judgment. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. This is what it's like to be in a kingdom. And to have a king whose fame goes throughout the entire earth, who is respected because they know that Yahweh, the most high power, is dealing with him and with the nation. And that he, the king, is there to serve and lead Israel. Brothers and sisters of Israel, notice the theme. Everything is about Israel. Everything. Everything. So you can choose this world. Or you can choose your birthright and your heritage. You can choose the nation that everything in this Bible is done for everything even the curses and the captivity that we're enduring today prove who we are and are to prepare us for the new kingdom all praise to the most high make no mistake about it world war three and the nuclear destruction of america are coming it will coincide exactly with the return of our king of kings lord of lords savior High Priest and Brother Yahweh Shai, thus saith Yahweh. 
Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.